Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. <laughs> Little Bo Peep had lost her sheep while out in the meadow green. They wandered close by some wolves who were sly, and soon by these wolves they were seen. one of their kind to look like little Bo Peep. Out he did go with one thought in mind, to capture the poor little sheep.
with the show. Taste of human blood. Ain't nobody gonna be safe out in the houses. We get together and wipe them off the island. You go call the sheriff. Yes, Paul. All right, what can anyone tell me about it? Well, you don't tell him. Here, he come on her first. How'd the rest of you get here so fast? Brad and Sculler was at the gas station when I called you, sir. He came on the park driving back here. Who else knows about it? Only Preacher Biggers. I called him after I called you. What for? Well, I figured somebody ought to tell her brother what happened to her. Preacher Biggers is the only one in Frenchtown got a telephone. Well, we're lucky you don't have a whole pocket full of dimes, are we? Well, don't the family got a right to know? It's up to the authorities. Now, Ellie and Lawrence Burrafu got a father next to death. He hears about something like this, there's gonna be two dead bodies. Is that what you want? I guess not. Now, 
Well, what can you tell me, Doc? Right now? Only that it's not considered good medical practice to perform autopsies in the middle of swamps, surrounded by howling dogs and scratching rustics. I, uh, want the remains moved to the hospital as soon as you can arrange it. Do you think that can be accomplished by the neighborhood clots without completely obliterating any chance there might be of determining cause of death? Sally! Somebody grab a hold of him now. Go on, stop him, man. Come on, you, you don't want to see it like that, Lord. Let me go. Anybody know how it happened, Sheriff Whitaker? Did you bring him here, Reverend? He just stole my car and come anyway, Sheriff. This couldn't be done by a human person. Take your hands off me, mister. Now you hold on to your manners, boy. All right, you got to set the right, man, let's hold it. Let's just hold it. Now you go on home with the Reverend and wait for me. Go on. Go on. Now you two boys help Doc with the body. Now the rest of you get out of here. I want to look around by myself. Go on, get. Come on, Lawrence. Come on. He thinks someone murdered her. Well, what do you think? Wild dogs do it to her? Tell me what you mean by do it. Dogs might very well have done something to her. There were bite marks. Well, then they killed her. You show me a pack of dogs where one of them knows how to hit you on the side of the head and knock you unconscious, and I'll sign a death certificate saying she was killed by dogs. Something struck her. Someone struck her. With enough force either to kill her outright or to render her sufficiently senseless to be dragged out into that field and left for the dogs to finish off. Find someone strong enough to do that with his left hand, and you'll have who did it. Left hand. The mark was along here. That's where a left-handed person would strike you if you were facing him. You've got a murder, Sheriff. That's just what I need. Sir? Sheriff? I'd like to come in if you'd allow it. Hi, Lawrence. You feeling better? Did you find out who did it to her? How's your father? Does he know about it? I just bathed him. Do you want to pay your greetings? That'll pleasure me. What's he saying? What he's been saying ever since Ellie was killed. Uh, Hugh, what are you saying, Hugh? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Henny. Little Kerouk. Yeah. Yes. 
What was he talking about? I don't know French. What's a loucarou? I don't know. Well, you speak French. Never heard that word before. First time I heard that word was when I come back from where they found Ellie. Did he know about Ellie? Yeah, he knows. Who told him? Nobody told him. Well, then how does he know? Well, I can't tell you that. He's been talking like that ever since I got back. Looking about his pretty Ellie, his little girl, sweet daughter, and the Lucaru. He knows. Somehow he knows without anybody telling him. Nah, it doesn't make any sense. He's just got crazy things going on in his head because he's old and sick. Let's talk about what's going on in your head. Well, you know what's going on in my head. I want to know what got it going. It wasn't wild dogs that killed Ellie. Now, how do you know that? She was having trouble. What kind of trouble? With a man. Now, who? I don't know who. Wasn't anybody from down here on the bayou. Somebody up on Pecan Hill. Some other Marsh Island snobbery. Well, how'd you know? She'd tell you that? She didn't tell me anything. That's how I know. We was good friends. She used to tell me everything. Then suddenly she just... shut up tight. Wouldn't talk a word to me. That's how it was last night when she was ironing her dress and brushing out her hair. I asked her. She wouldn't say. I know. Don't you worry about that. How'd you know there was trouble between them? You said there was trouble. I could read her face like a newspaper. Something had gone wrong. Something bad. I tried to find out what it was. She wouldn't tell me. She just sassed me. Told me to shut my mouth and gut a French. Well, what'd you do? Well, I hit her. How hard? Well, hard enough to let her know what I thought about her letting the quality put their fat fingers all over her. Go on, show me how hard you hit her. Show me how you hit her. Go on, show me. Now, I've known you for 10 years. I never knew you were left-handed. Mr. Rodan. Good morning, Sheriff. How are you? Is there something I can do for you? Well, I just uh, came by. I guess you heard about Ellie Burrafu. Yes, I did hear, Sheriff. It's a terrible thing to happen. Come on, let's sit on the gallery. Is it true they discovered her body just the other side of our grove? Yeah. Right near the Grumandy place. Have you any idea who might have done it? Well, we don't know much yet. I was just trying to trace where she went after she left the house before she got to the marshes. She could have come along uh, the Con Hill Road, or well, maybe she took a shortcut across the bayou. I was half wondering if you might have been outside between 8 and 12 and noticed her pass by. Oh, I'm afraid not, Sheriff. I wouldn't be in a very happy man about that time last night. Oh? Yes, I was doing battle with a, another bout of malaria. There was a time there when I thought my shaking was going to bring the whole house down around my ears, but it uh, finally passed off around one or two, and I slept the rest of the night like a dead man. Andrew? We're just about ready for lunch. Uh, Miss Rodan, I didn't know you'd return to Marsh Island. Just a couple of hours ago, I met a plane in New Orleans. I guess you don't remember me. You're Aaron Whitaker. I remember you very well. When did you meet Sheriff Whitaker, Louise? Well, he wasn't sheriff then, Andrew. He was just plain Aaron Whitaker, and he was too busy ahead of me in junior high. 
<laughs> and I had this terrible crush on him. Louise. You probably didn't know a single thing about that, did you? Well, I wish I had. We could have compared them. Compared what? Crushes. I had one on you, too. <laughs> well, why ever didn't you say something about it? To a Rodan? Well, we're human, aren't we? I mean, practically, aren't we, Andrew, like anybody else? Even though we're a fine old family and settled Marsh Island and all that, even though there's always been a row dance living in this great old house here, even though you can't keep it warm when it's cold out, cool when it's hot, or dry when rain's filtering in through the cracks. Uh, Louise. Well, it's true, isn't it? At least it was five years ago when I left. Has anybody fixed the roof since then? Or put in heating? Louise. Uh, Sheriff Whitaker is attending to uh, a small matter, and I'm sure you are impatient to get on with it. Isn't that so, Sheriff? Well, it's nice seeing you again, Miss Rodant. Well, you will come to call, won't you? Oh, I, I have to remember all the way they say things here. Come to call, is that it? Or, or pay a visit? <laughs> in New York, it's ring up, drop in, hop over. Things are much more active in New York. Uh, Louise, I'll be right along. Oh, dear, I'm talking too much. You notice that, I suppose. I'm a compulsive talker. Everybody says so. You know, it happened to me shortly after I graduated from junior high school. What a pity it didn't happen sooner. I could have mentioned that terrible crush I had on you. <laughs> oh, Andrew is staring at me. Well, goodbye, Sheriff Whitaker, and do... Uh, ring up, uh, drop in, and hop over. <laughs> oh, my, that does sound energetic, doesn't it? Oh, uh, put your hat on. You're going to get a sunstroke in this climate. <laughs> I'm going, Andrew. I'm going. My sister has been ill, Sheriff. That's why she's come home. And I hope she'll be feeling better soon. Oh, yes, she will be with a lot of rest, quiet, no excitement of any sort. Uh, what you mean is I shouldn't bother to ring up, uh, drop in, or hop over. It hadn't occurred to me you were taking the invitation seriously, Sheriff. I wasn't. Mr. Rodan? Sheriff? Up a clue, Sheriff. Either one of you ever see this? Oh. What did the fella call it? You identified Ali Burafu. That means you knew her. But we knew her, all right. She did cleaning for us a while. Back after Ma died. How long? Yeah, near about. That's before she went to work at the hospital. You have a data? Sure didn't. And telling me what you were doing the night you was killed? I was down in town to Bean Wagon. A lot of folks seen me. Yeah, when would you get back? What would you do? Came back around 10, went to bed. That's what. You see him? Well, I didn't get in until about 12. Well, where were you? Pictures in Leadville. Well, when you got home, did you look in to see if Tom was home? Well, Tom Jr. here's a grown man. I don't bed shake him no more. Anyhow, why are you asking us things? It was wild dogs that done it, wasn't it? You saying it wasn't wild dogs? There's more than one kind. And I'll see you. you to town. Oh, Hugh sent me up to the store to buy some things. Some asaphysia and some sulfur. What for? For the Lukarook. For it? For to drive the Lukarook away. Uh, Sarah, do you know what a Lukarook is? 
No, Sheriff, I don't, but Hugh thinks the Lucaroo killed Ellie, and now he's scared it's going to get Lawrence. Why, well, you say that? Yes, sir. Only I'll tell you something, Sheriff. Didn't know Lucaroo kill Ellie, no matter what the old man says. And Lawrence didn't do it either. And if that's what you've been thinking. Oh, I say he had a reason, and he's left-handed. He didn't kill her, Sheriff. Don't go waste no time on Lawrence. I know that. Now, how do you know that, sir? Because I know who did kill her. Who? You find out who's never made Ellie pregnant, and you'll find out who killed her. Doc, I'm not getting any more answers out of the back of your head than I was out of the front. How come you didn't tell me Ellie was pregnant? I knew she was pregnant. I was third in my class. How come you didn't say anything? Aaron and I was performing an autopsy to determine cause of death. Pregnancy didn't cause her death. Well, I'm not so sure. Well, I am. Doc, if she was pregnant, somebody got her that way. And that's a clear lead to, to who killed her. No. No, it isn't. Antibiotics, anyone? Uh. None at all. Because I got her pregnant. And I didn't kill her. I loved her. I guess I'll have some of your antibiotics. Sorry, there's only one glass. I didn't say anything about needing a glass. I know what you're thinking. You only think you did. Burroughs Druton, MD, FACS. Grandson of Senator Jefferson Druton of Louisiana, out of his mind in love with a girl who does cleaning. Isn't that what you're thinking? Lawrence said she had a date. He didn't say who with. You know who she had a date with? Of course. Me. But she never came. I waited until I decided she wasn't going to come, then I went home. Where were you supposed to meet? Near the bottom of Pecan Hill. In the grove, across the wall from the Rodin's property. That's where we met a lot. One time in particular. Lauren said she looked worried. She was. That's what we were going to talk about. The baby. I wanted to abort it. She wanted to marry me and have it. She wanted us to go someplace to live, somewhere else, where people wouldn't know us. I leave Marsh Island. And the hospital. And my whole life. You didn't want to. I didn't have the guts to. I'm almost 50, Aaron. Why do you start over again at 50? Sounds like I killed her, doesn't it? You ever see this before? No, never did. Where'd you get it? You never saw Ellie wear it. This? Ellie never owned anything like that. Aaron. I didn't kill Ellie. Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Hey, uh, Doc, what do you use sulfur and acetate for? You don't, not anymore. Well, when you used to use them, what'd you use them for? 
My grandmother used to claim they kept wolves away. Wolves? I see. You're not going to arrest me? You left-handed? No. Of course, whoever made that mark on Ellie could have come up from behind her and that'd make him right-handed. Maybe. I see. I had a terribly important meeting with the town council, so I made him drive me in with him. Well, have you found out who did that awful thing to that girl yet? Not yet. Do I, do I have to call you Sheriff, the way Andrew does? Could I call you Aaron? Aaron would be fine. <laughs> well, then you've got to call me Louise. All right, thank you. I was wondering if... Um... Was there something you wanted to say, Aaron? Yeah, I, I was wondering if you'd have a cup of coffee with me over at Eddie's. Well, I, I'd admire to do that very much, Aaron. You know I've never once in all my life been in this place. You know that? So now that you are, what do you think? Well, I think... I think Eddie doesn't make a very good cup of coffee. Maybe he likes something else to drink. Not much you can do to burger. They're all staring at me now. What would they do if they saw me take a drink? Uh, hey, listen, when Eddie finds out that he had a road dance in here tomorrow, all the prices are gonna go up. <laughs> we really own this town, don't we? Well, your great-granddaddy established it. Oh, I know it all got drummed into me when I was just little. Your FFL child. First family of Louisiana. Don't you ever forget it, child. You know I forgot it. What's everybody been saying about me coming back so suddenly after all this time? What's Andrew been telling him? Well, Andrew said you were sick. <laughs> oh, that is Andrew. He'd rather have one thought I was a terminal case or something than know the truth. You want to know the truth, Aaron? You want to know why I finally came back to the ancestral manor? Well, I can hardly say no, can I? No, I guess not after my leading you on this way. I was living with a man. That's what was happening. That's what Andrew just can't bear anyone knowing. And what is worse, the man I was living with was not socially acceptable. And what is worse? Oh, there's some work. Oh, yes, wait you here. The socially unacceptable man I had been living in sin with walked out on me. Well, I would think that Andrew would have been relieved. Oh, no, he was furious. Why, if they'd had dueling, he'd have dueled him dead. You don't walk out on a road dance, even if you are living in sin with her, and are socially unacceptable. You know what Andrew did? <laughs> he hired some detectives, and they came to New York and found me. They packed me right back here. Well, you didn't have to go. You could have said no. He's got all the money. He had cut me off. Could have gotten a job. Doing what? There's the curse of the road dance again. All we women folk were ever taught was piano and how to talk French. <laughs> so here I am, back at the old homestead, having been saved for myself. And Andrew's running around telling everybody I've been sick. I'm glad you're back. Are you, Aaron? Oh, well, I'll stop telling myself how unhappy I am because Andrew's such a stinker. Mr. Rodine, how do? Uh, afternoon. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Please don't let me interrupt your pleasures. I've been looking all over for you, Louise. Sheriff, this is where your sleuthing is taking you? Oh, Andrew, don't be so stuffy. Ed just invited me in here for a cup of coffee. Oh, 
Well, I'm much obliged to you, Sherry, for occupying my sister while I was doing town business. I'm ready to go home now, Louise. And you ought to get some rest. You're looking a little peaked. And you remember what the doctor told you. Andrew, it's no use. I've spilled the beans to Aaron. That is right. I have told him the whole ugly truth about why I'm back in my Island, so there's no point in going on and on and on about how I need rest now I've been sick and what the doctor said. I see. Well, it's uh, comforting to know that Sheriff Whitaker is not the town gossip. Sheriff, I hear it being said that Mr. Germandy and his boy are organizing a hunt for tomorrow, aiming to wipe out the wild dog population around here. Would you care to join in? We don't often get sport like that in these parts anymore. Well, I just might, Mr. Rodanth. Of course, if the Germandys kill off all those wild dogs, I don't know what they're going to have to talk about the rest of their lives. Are you ready, Louise? You might as well start thinking about him dying, Lawrence, if you aren't already. He can't last much longer. Is that French, Lawrence? It's not any French I ever heard. Well, that shot will keep him quiet for a few hours. Okay. Dr. Druden. Yes, Sarah, what is it? What did you find when you examined Ellie? Just that she was murdered? Dogs didn't do it. Like I said. Well, you were right. Excuse me. Nothing else? No. Nothing. Goodbye. Nothing? Troubling you, Sarah. If he says he didn't find nothing, either he's lying about being a doctor or he's lying about what he found. Who are you talking about? If I tell you something, Lawrence, will you promise to keep your head on your neck? Hmm? What is it you're going to tell me? Promise. Good bunch. We 
Sheriff, you coming on a wild dog hunt? Now you bring me a pelt, Tom. I'm disappointed you're not joining us, Sheriff. Well, somebody's got to mind the store. Good hunt. Somebody's coming this way like he is being hunted. Must be old Hugh again. What is it, Lawrence? You let me back, hey, Sheriff. Lawrence, what is it? He killed my sister. Come on, grab it now. Lawrence, now cool it off. Now. It was her. She was having a baby. It was his baby. Now, Lawrence, we know Come you're on, grieving. Lawrence, boy, 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 take a I don't need no reason to go around and kill you. Now, Lawrence, just stand right up there. Come on over here. Now, you all go hunt your wild dogs. Now, get out of here. Now, you come with me. Come on. Now well, we uh, better get going with it while well, we still have the light. Looking for clues. Well, I found the clue I was looking for. What clue? Are you? I was wondering if you were home. Well, where else would I be? Not shooting down dogs with the rest of the folks in these parts. Would you care for a glass of lemonade? My clue you are. Thank you. It's mighty hot. You'd have just driven on by. Oh, I suppose so, if you hadn't stopped me. Well, why did you just come calling like everybody else? Anybody just wouldn't come calling, not here. Not without an invitation. I was brought up on Marsh Island. So was I. I guess that's why nobody ever came calling. Well, have you solved your murder yet? <laughs> not quite. But do you have any suspects? Is that the word? Suspects? That's, that's the word. I got three of them. But I don't want any one of them to have done it. Now, Doc Druton's a... Well, he's the closest thing I got to a friend here in this town. And Lawrence, Lawrence was a brother. Yes, if he did it, thank you. All the folks of quality around here will, uh, will say, see what kind of people there are down in Frenchtown. They're half foreign and everything. And if it was Tom Germandy, that'd mean there was something between Tom and Ellie. I wouldn't like to think she'd lower herself that much. I'd like to. If I'm some sheriff, aren't I? I've never heard you talk so long before. I've never heard myself keep still so long. What do you suppose that means? Well, I don't know what it means to you, but... when I feel out of place, I just, uh, shut up. When I do, I just keep talking. I guess that's what it means. I guess that's what it means. Well, I, uh... I guess you'd better drink your lemonade. Yeah. Well, they shot eight dogs today. It took 20 of them to do it. Wild dogs, Dr. Drew, because he's the one I'm going to get as soon as I get out of here. You get a long sentence for what you did today. You take my advice and just let him alone. He killed Ellie. Well, that. Well, get yourself some sleep. I'll see you later, Terry. You want me to lock him in? You planning to escape, Lawrence? No. 
be waiting. I'll only like it if he has visitors. Beats me. But I'm gonna do like Aaron says. I'm gonna lock you up. Nobody's gonna be pulling out one of my prisons. Now you be a real good boy. Sit down. I'll be right back. Same, except for the blows. This time, whoever did it tore them both apart with his fingernails. Cover him up. Aaron, what in devil's own name is it? Well, you and the boys could have saved yourself the trouble of shooting all them dogs, man. They didn't kill Ellie or Lawrence or Don Terry. Well, who did? Bang whappers, look at them bars. You get through those bars, Tom? Sure couldn't. I don't believe you could either. So I just run out of suspects. Are you sure? Is there anything you can tell us? Yeah, three people were killed by somebody strong enough to tear out iron bars. Find somebody around here who's strong enough to do that, and you got yourself a killer. Well, ain't nobody that strong. Well, there are no marks of any instruments used on the bars. They were torn out by bare hands. I'll uh, send someone for the body, Sheriff. Uh, 
I'd like to have uh, four or five deputies for volunteers. Anyone volunteer? Well, what do you need deputies for, Aaron? Well, Ellie and Lawrence Burrafu were murdered by this wild man. There's only one Burrafu left, old Hugh. How do we know he's not next? I'm going to post a 24-hour guard down at his house. All right, I want volunteers. I thought so. Look at what happened to that deputy of yours who's gone in Lawrence. You want me to go on out there get myself all torn apart guarding some old boy who's three quarter dead anyhow? Now go on home, Ollie. Go on, get out of here. Go lock your doors. Well, that ain't no joke, Aaron. I'm locking and I'm bolting. And I ain't feeding my dog. You catch whatever, whoever it is, running around doing them things. I've seen them bodies. Tom Jr., come on. I'm getting on home. Good morning, Mr. Rodan. A little quiet, wouldn't you say, Sheriff? Uh-huh. There are probably eight or nine guns on us right now. Is that so? Well, I heard you were lacking deputies, so I thought I'd come and offer my services, if you think I qualify. Yeah, I appreciate that, but what happens when I'm supposed to give you orders? I guess you'll just have to forget who I am and remember who you are, Sheriff. Uh, come on, I'll drive you over to Hughes. I was going there myself. Marsh Island was settled by my people, Sheriff, and I've never been into this part of town. You and your sister have seen a lot of new things these days. I believe you're right, Sheriff. Let's go this way. It appears to be just as quiet here as up in town. And twice as many eyes watching us. You seem to have a tremendous knowledge of everything that's going on around you, even when it's completely invisible. Well, I am the Sheriff. Morning, sir. How's you? Oh, he seems a little weaker today, Sheriff. Good morning, sir, Mr. Rodan. You know me. Oh, yes. Won't you come in, sir? My daddy used to work for you when your granddaddy had more than a hundred hunters. Well, there's only a few of them left now, and most of that hunting is from pasture land. What's wrong with him? He's had a fit. Doctor, you were third in your class. I never went to college. I knew he was having a fit when he started having it. He's had a fit and it was brought on according to what you tell me by something he smelled. 
Now, until he comes to, I can't say anything more. Have you ever had anything like this before? You've been the Marsh Island doctor for 20 years. Oh, yes, but not the Rodanth doctor. I wasn't good enough for them. They went to New Orleans. Said something about malaria. This isn't malaria. You got any ideas? Not until I can talk to him. If I just knew something about his medical history. Well, I'll find out for you. How? I'm the sheriff. Is he all right, Aaron? Well, the doctor says he doesn't have a temperature. And his pulse is all right. Well, it's just as though he was sleeping it off. Sleeping what off? Whatever seized him. You ever have a fit like that before, anyone in the family? Granddaddy used to have what they called his spells. What were they? Oh, I don't know. Please, sit down. I mean, nobody would ever talk about it. Oh, <laughs> I was just little. All I remember was a lot of running around and whispering and people talking about Granddaddy having one of his spells upstairs. A long time later, I was sure they meant he'd been drinking. Well, maybe it wasn't that at all. Maybe it was the same thing your brother just had. Well, what is it, Aaron? What are you looking at? This. Well, that was my mother. She gave it to me. You know where it is? Oh, good heavens, no. Well, I mean, I, I might know if I looked for it. I left it here when I went to New York. I suppose it's around here somewhere. Why? Well, it is somewhere. Well, what are you doing with it? Is that it? Well, of course it is. Where'd you get it? I found it near where they discovered Ellie's body. She stole it? Not necessarily. Well, how else could she have gotten it? I'm going to find out. You mean Andrew? I don't mean anything. I just mean I'm going to find out. I'm going to the hospital. Oh, Aaron, could I come with you, please? I'm going to have to wait in the other room while I question him. I gave it to her. When? The night she was murdered. Uh, Mr. Rodan, maybe I oughtn't to be questioning you in your present condition. Although the doc did say he was going to send you home tonight. Now, if you don't know what you're saying... I... Oh, I didn't kill the girl, Sheriff, and I know perfectly what I'm saying. I gave her that bit of bright work in return for uh, certain favors she did me over the past year. Favor? Not the kind you're thinking, Sheriff. You ever heard of Siebert syndrome? Well, it's an offshoot of blackwater fever, the one form of malaria they don't know anything about, really. And uh, once you got it, you got it forever. And the only time you know you had an attack is when you wake up after it's all over. I've had it for over a year now. What do you do about it? You take tripyridone. It's the only thing that keeps it under control. Where do you get that? Here, at the hospital. Yeah, then Doc Juton would have known about it. No. Sheriff, I have an interesting aversion to my maladies being paraded around the town, being the subject of gossip in ballrooms and bathrooms. Ellie Burrafu used to bring me the medicine in the evening, a month's supply at a time. And those were the favors she did me in return for some money, and uh, the night she died, that locket. Mr. Rodin, are you telling me that Ellie brought you some medicine on the night she was murdered? That's right. What time? Oh, between 8 and 9 o'clock. Where was she went? I don't know. It was a pretty dress. It was uh, sort of brown, I think, with, uh, with checks. But she wasn't in a pleasured mood that night. She had something on her mind, it seemed like. So I gave the locket to Ellie, saying, here, maybe this will brighten you up a little. Did it? Not noticeably. But she thanked me, and I hung, hung it around her neck. I closed the catch, and then she went away to get murdered. What'd you do after Ellie left? Something stupid, Sheriff. 
Nothing. Nothing. I should have gone right back upstairs and taken two of the pills, but I didn't. I just sat there, thinking to myself, what, what a pretty girl Ellie Berifu was. Just sat there thinking. And, uh, man, the next thing I knew, I was taking a shower. And it was about five o'clock in the morning. Mr. Roland, when you came home last evening after hunting, what'd you do then? I dined with my sister. And after that? I went straight to bed. It tired me out more than I thought that, huh? So I went to bed early. Couldn't have been later than nine. Slept the night. Without waking? Straight through to breakfast. And that's when I learned from my sister what had happened in the night to Lawrence Burfu and your deputy. It was the same person, wasn't it, Sheriff? All these murders, they've been committed by the same person, haven't they? Well, it seems so. If there is a person that can tear iron bars out of a brick wall. Well, Mr. Rodan, you don't happen to be left-handed. I'm ambidextrous, Sheriff. I can sign my name with both hands at the same time, and it would take a handwriting expert to tell you the difference. You know, there have been five of us in my family who inherited that interesting trait from my great-great-grandfather. Yeah, take care, sir. Yeah. Oh, uh, Miss Rodent, is Sheriff Whitaker still with you? Oh, there he is. Aaron, I can't get one person in this fear-ridden town to take this medication to old Hugh. If he breaks loose with one more spell of the Luca Roots, it'll be the finish of it. I'll take it. A spell of the what? Uh, it's something the old man keeps saying in French. Nobody around here can understand it. I know French. You go with me? Of course. Miss Rodin. Copy. Said he went to bed at nine. Well, I know it was early. You know, he slept into night. Well, I don't know. I, I dropped off about 11. Sarah, how is he? Sulfur. I smell sulfur. That's what it is. Now it's a sedative. <laughs> That's what people used to say. I know. Look at him! Oh, yes! Yeah. Look at him? Monsieur, qu'est-ce que vous dites? Monsieur, répétez ça, s'il vous plaît. Voilà. Dans la main. Le look and look. Après. Long, long. Oh! Oh! Aaron? Aaron, it, it's his dialect. Look, Rook. He's saying Lou Garou. Werewolf. He's saying werewolf. He says that I'm his next victim.
Okay, now quieten down and listen. Now, Tom Gurmady, he, he knows these marshes better than his own name, so I'm putting him in charge. And remember this. Andrew Rodanth is out there, and he's turned into a wolf. And we got to find him and shoot him down like a wolf. Mr. Rodanth, this Mayor. is any place for you. Mayor, you're planning to hunt down my brother, hunt him down and shoot him like a wild animal? Miss Rodanth, you shouldn't be here. Mayor, Mayor, he, he's sick. He has this illness. Don't you understand that? He has, the, he has these seizures. Miss Rodanth, he had fangs coming two inches out of his mouth. Mayor, Mayor, listen to me. There, there are drugs. Hey, this here's his sister. How do we know she ain't going to turn out to be some kind of a wolf? You shut up! Mayor, Mayor, listen to me. Finding him is one thing, but hunting him down, shooting him is another thing altogether. Now, this is a law enforcement matter. You organized this posse without any legal authority. I'm acting under authority vested in me by the Marsh Island Charter. Now, Tom Germany's in charge now. Louise. Come on, Louise. Come on, boys. find him, but they're still at it. Aaron, Aaron, come in here. There's something I want you to see. What is it? Lycanthropy and lycanthrope-like diseases. What's lycanthropy? Werewolves. Oh, Louise, you don't believe it. That... What I believe, what I want to believe is that it's what Andrew said it was, a, a disease that you can take pills to control. But after what Dr. Druton said, and after what happened at the Burfu house, and Granddaddy's fits, and now this book. Let me see. I mean, the diseases resemble lycanthropy in some of its symptoms. These quasi-lycanthropic diseases are relatively harmless and easily controlled by a series of modern drugs. Well, that's what Andrew said it was, those pills. Lycanthropia veritum. True lycanthropy may also respond favorably to the same drugs for a time, and then the disease develops an immunity to the drug. In true lycanthropy, the victim's yearning for the taste of blood turns him into a most powerful, dangerous, and deadly killer. Mythology has it that werewolves are repelled and rendered temporarily harmless by the smell of sulfur. And it is also recorded, though with no scientific basis whatever, that certain persons, sensitive sorcerers, exorcisers of evil, claim to be able to... No, no, go on. Go on, read it. It's mythology. I'm not interested in mythology. Well, I am. Claim to be able to see the shape of a pentagram in the hand of the werewolf's next victim. Louise, it's 1972. I heard he looked into Lawrence's hand just before Andrew killed him. Well, that's what Sarah said, but Sarah's a superstitious... He just looked into mine. Louise, he is your brother. Andrew is a... He's out there. It's in the barn. Stay right there. Come on. Come on. Stay here, Louise. Aaron, he tore iron bars out of cement. Then he was born in this house. Maybe he'll have more respect.
And after I leave, lock and shutter this door. And then go in there and lock and bolt that door. And don't leave the room. I don't know what I'll do when I find him, but it won't be what they'll do. Now, don't leave the room. Don't answer the door until you hear it's me, Aaron, saying it's me, all right? Aaron, if he has to be killed, not their way. Rodan! Rodan! The destruction of the victim. And only two methods of destruction are known. Death by burning or death by shooting with bullets that have been blessed.
of her. He knew. He made me fire at it. He knew. The bullet. He must have had them fast. He must have done that. He knew. Aaron, look. Refresh yourself. It's intermission time. The concession stand is open and ready to serve you. Well, you see what I get from the refreshment counter. Oh boy, popcorn and candy bars and ice cream and oh boy, sparkling ice cold Coca Cola. Oh. Boy, that tastes good. Have you been to the refreshment counter? Remember, your favorite snack will taste especially good with world-famous ice-cold Coca-Cola. It's time to stretch and fetch. See what's cooking at our refreshment counter. You'll find your favorite foods and beverages, plus many new goodies to tempt your appetite and add to your evening's pleasure. Everything's the finest quality. So treat yourself now. After the show, please replace the speaker on its stand. If you accidentally break the cord, please turn the speaker in at the refreshment stand or the manager's office. Thank you. And by the way, on your way home, drive... Where is everybody going? To the refreshment center. It's everybody's favorite spot for delicious, tasty food from a snack to a full meal. Drinks, coffee, hot chocolate, and ice cold drinks of all flavors. Plus all the extras, including gum, ice cream, candy. Make your evening at this drive-in even more enjoyable. The refreshment stand has everything to make your visit here a pleasant one. Why not get something now? It's intermission time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. Crispy, crunchy, hot buttered popcorn. Really good. Sizzling hot dogs, bursting with juicy goodness. 
Candy bars, a taste-tempting array. Tangy, tasty barbecues, served piping hot. Thirst-quenching, refreshing, ice-cold drinks. Refreshing, delicious, satisfying ice cream. Fresh brewed hot coffee, as you like it. You'll guarantee mouth-watering satisfaction. Mmm. And now he slips his costume on a beautiful golden bun. There's his cue bang, bang. to go out on stage. He's the natural. He's the rage. Meet this person at a tea at our refreshment counter. Treat the family. How do you like your pizza? Gobbled? Nibbled? Two-fisted style. you like ours best anyway. A crisp, delicate crust topped with our own special nippy tomato sauce, seasoned just the way you like it, and lots of golden Italian cheese melted right in. Delicious, and on sale now at the refreshment center. Pizza, piping hot and tangy. How about some right now? Wouldn't some hot buttered popcorn hit the spot right now? Extra fluffy, extra big kernels of it pop to perfection. Then drenched with the golden goodness of pure sweet creamery butter. Can't you just taste it? We heat the container extra high, but <laughs> you better buy two more for the rest of the family. Piping hot golden buttered popcorn at the refreshment center right now. How do you make a picture of a perfect hamburger? Start with the finest grade of government inspected beef. Take it sizzling hot from the griddle and serve it up on an oven fresh bun. For the finishing touches, add mustard, ketchup, relish, or the works. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Yes, that picture perfect hamburger is waiting for you right now at your refreshment center. There's time to pick up enough for everyone. As you leave the theater, folks, please be careful. Don't let this happen to your car. Be sure to remove the speaker before you leave. If you should accidentally pull a speaker loose, please turn it in at our snack bar or box office. Thank you. Hot popcorn just popped. Try a terrific hot barbecue sandwich. It's intermission time, folks, and that means it's time for a tasty snack. How about a stroll over to the refreshment counter for a delicious bite to eat? You don't have to worry about missing any part of the show because our announcer will let you know three minutes before the show starts again. See you over at the refreshment counter. And now, here's our own special hot chocolate. Extra creamy, rich, and delicious because we whip every drop frothy smooth. Gives it something special in the flavor department. Creamy hot chocolate at the refreshment center. Pop's Old Fashioned Soda Shop. Remember how good Pop's candy and soft drinks were? His popcorn was the best in town. 
Some of your fondest memories are of refreshing treats from Pop Soda Shop. Well, there's no reason why you can't enjoy flavorful treats today, just like way back then. Visit our refreshments. It's refreshment time, and our refreshment stand is loaded with good things to eat. There's crispy, crunchy popcorn, and hot, delicious, buttered popcorn, lots of candy, and frosty, refreshing cold drinks. Why not treat yourself at the refreshment center now? Nothing refreshes like frosty, delicious ice cream. At your refreshment stand, you'll find every kind and every flavor of frozen treats. Refreshing, good as they can be. Yes, tasty ice cream for everybody at the refreshment center. Pick some up now. Popcorn hungry, we have it. Get from the popper. There are other treats for you, too, such as fresh candies and ice cream. Visit the refreshment center now. Enjoy a delicious snack and ice-cold Coca-Cola. Music to the ears of the hungry. The sizzle of a mouth-watering hamburger. Fresh, lean beef done to a golden brown, couched in a soft bun, and garnished to taste. Man, that's hunger heaven. And you'll feel like you're heaven sent when you get one at our refreshment stand. Now, it's showtime.
have Ernie call me when he checks the body. Will do. All right, come on, let's get it on the stretcher. Find a registration? Yeah. From Los Angeles. Let me see. It's fresh. John has been a murder. Who? Man called Hammond, salesman from Los Angeles. Where did it happen? Out on Vasquez Road. He must have made the wrong turn last night and ran out of gas. Yeah? Something attacked him in his car. But something? What do you mean, something? That's it. We don't know what it was. It, but it practically tore off the roof, broke through the windshield and mangled his body so badly he didn't even look human. Now, we found some tracks. I'd like you to take a look at them. Sure, come on. Well, the way you described the killing, this would sound like a leopard. Well, these aren't leopard tracks, are they? No, no. They bear some resemblance to the tracks of a wolf. But it'd have to be enormous. Look how deep that claw mark is. Yeah? No, no, it can't be a wolf, because even allowing for the possibility of size, the pads are different. See, that's not a wolf pad. Listen, I think we ought to get Byron in on this. Why don't you give him a call? Well, Mr. Byron is busy. You asked him? Yeah, I asked him. What's the matter with him? I don't know. It's just as if the animal changed its scent. How can an animal change its scent? It doesn't make sense, does it? No. If there isn't any water around here they could have crossed. Hey, what kind of an animal are we looking for, anyway? First, it nearly rips the roof off that car. Then it breaks through the windshield and tears up that guy like it did. Now its scent disappears. What did it do, fly away? Charlie, go help with the dogs. Sorry. Well, what did it do? Thank you. Hi, Sandy. Coffee, sir? Coffee, sir? Um, no, dinner, Friday night. Sorry, that's out of stock. Oh, you're angry at me. No, I like not hearing from you for weeks at a time. Oh, come on, Sandy, you know I'm working on a book. I haven't been out of the house in three weeks. I didn't know that paralyzed your dialing finger. Oh, uh, I should have phoned, and I didn't phone. However, 
I'm busy Friday night. I have to grind coffee beans. Dinner Friday night. That has got to be more interesting than grinding coffee beans. Just a little bit. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I let you do this to me. started walking. But when it walked, it walked on two legs. They're gone. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that thing flew away again? Take your choice. Would you rather believe it erased its own tracks? Vernon, any way you look at it, the tracks go from four feet to two feet to nothing, period. follow those tracks any better than you. I don't know. I think maybe this afternoon I'm going to take a drive out to Byron's and see if he has any suggestions. Good luck. Ah, he's not that bad. You just have to know him. Uh-huh. Well, if he tells you anything, let me know. I will. Thanks for the lift. John, you're absolutely certain you don't know what kind of an animal it was? No. But there is something else. What? Look, when the animal was walking, its tracks were deeper than they should have been. I don't follow you. Now, look, when it was running on all fours, it left the track of an animal weighing 100 pounds or so. So what? When it walked upright on two legs, it weighed more than I do. I thought you might be around. I should have known I can't sneak up on you. John, how are you? 
fine, Byron. So, Bellas persuaded you to join the hunt, then? Well, how'd you know? Why else would you be here? <laughs> Besides, I saw your name in the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, in on it. Good. At least you haven't entirely lost your urge to action, then. John, it's good to see you. Come on inside. Been a long time, Byron. What have you been doing with yourself? Well, I'm getting ready for my trip to South America. I thought you were going to Africa. South America's better. Less familiar, more demanding. I planned to cross the Mato Grosso country there. Mato Grosso? A lot of people have disappeared in there. Yes, I know. How's the hunting business? Lucrative. How's the uh, story writing business? It's a living. Is it? How about a scotch? Sure. Hello, Grant. How are you? Very well, thank you, Mr. Weatherby. It's been a long time. It's good to see you again, sir. You're looking quite well. Thank you. Good to see you. So, tell me about this killer animal. You've seen its tracks? Yeah. And? I don't know. Thanks. You couldn't identify him? Well, the tracks look something like a wolf, but I don't think it's a wolf. What do you think it is? Huh? You tell me. It changed its scent, Byron, so the dogs couldn't follow it. It ran on four legs, walked upright on two, and then erased its own tracks. But that's fantastic. Then help me find it. I can't. I've got too much to do to get ready for my trip. You can't find time for something like this. That's hard to believe. I'm busy, John. So, what else? Are any further signs of this animal since the killing? Make that plural. It got its second victim last night. Where? About a mile from the first killing. Same method of kill? The same method of mangle would be a better description. Well, both killings occurred within a mile of each other. That narrows down the field. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, the animal's got a cave within that area. That limitation should help you to find it before it kills a third time. The third time? You know that once an animal starts killing humans, it never stops. Door's locked, isn't it? Yeah, it's locked. Let me go check, make sure, though. I'm coming with you. Who's out there? Better not have any funny ideas. I got a gun in here! I know someone is out there. Something like this, they're going to have to close the place. It's always 
jam to your Friday nights. Thank you. Yeah, not now. No, not now. No one has any idea where this animal comes from. Sandy, nobody has any idea what this animal is, much less where it comes from. You know, in 20 years of hunting, I have never run across a predator even remotely like this one. And it's driving me nuts that I can't run it down. Then why doesn't your friend Byron help you? I don't know. I don't know how he can resist the challenge. You know, I'm going to go to my grave not understanding how the two of you could be so close for so many years. You have to understand him. He's a... Speak of the devil. Hmm. Here he comes. Byron. Good evening. Came into town to get some supplies. Stores are closed. Thought I'd drop in for a drink. Don't worry, I'm not gonna join you. Oh, sit down. No, come on, sit down. Was I right? About what? The animal killing again. Yeah, yes you were. Fascinating creature or whatever it is. You find it fascinating that four human beings have been slaughtered? Some people are saying it was a werewolf. Did you know that? <laughs> yes, yeah, I heard that. I don't scoff. Remember that wolf we went after in Canada? How the Indians said that it wasn't a wolf at all, but a trapper turned into a wolf? Mm-hmm. Now, there was an animal. There was a man killer. You never could accept that the life of a predator is superior to that of its victim, could you? What? I said he could never appreciate I, I heard what you said. It's believing you that I'm having trouble with. That's a lovely dress you wear. Well, Byron and I never really thought too much alike. We almost did once. But you preferred to wait in the trees. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the allure that mortal danger holds for you always left me a little bit cool. But only in mortal danger are we alive, John. Only by risking our lives can we truly appreciate them. What kind of a life are you leading now? What kind of life is anyone around here leading now? Emasculated by society and safety? Well, uh, we're enjoying it. <laughs> I give life as well as take it. The animals I kill are never more alive than in that instant before my bullet strikes them. Come on. And I'm never more alive than in that instant when they could kill me just as easily. I couldn't help overhearing you, sir. You're a hunter, aren't you? Why do you want to know? Perhaps you could tell me what the pleasure is that full-grown and presumably intelligent men get from murdering defenseless animals. Hey, look, I think you better just... Uh... I didn't mean to intrude, of course, but tell me. Is it a sense of power? A sense of accomplishment? Or is it a regression to the past when killing animals was a way of life? Sir? I couldn't tell you that. I thought not. I thought not, sir. I could show you, though. I beg your pardon? The pleasure I get from killing. I could show you what that is. Though I doubt you'd die with the nobility of an animal. Shall I show you? Shall I? Byron. <laughs> You're pretty good. You almost had me convinced. 
would have been so easy. <laughs> He's crazy, I'm telling you. He's always been like that, Sandy. He's got a strange sense of humor. That's humor? Well, to him it is, yes. You don't know him that well. You haven't seen the things that he's done. You know that wolf he was talking about, the, the one in Canada? What about it? But in order to kill it, he waited for it all night on the ground beside some bait. A killer wolf, a real terror. I waited up in a tree. <laughs> That's where anyone in his right mind would wait. Well, not according to Byron. See, the wolf had to have the same chance to live that he did. Him with a rifle? With one bullet in it. Oh, am I supposed to admire that? Well, not admire it, maybe, but respect it. He got badly bitten by that wolf. They were so close together, I couldn't get in a shot. Byron finished it off with a hunting knife. He came very close to dying. being silly. John, you've got to come over. I'll be right over. Oh! 
came as soon as you called, Mr. Weatherby. She's in the bedroom. She was very lucky. We must have scared it away before it got through the door. She never saw it. I'm sorry, Sandy. I want you to get some things together. You're going to stay at my place for a while. Okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I got a feeling you're going out looking for this animal yourself. What else is left to do? I'm putting on a curfew. No one in the hills after dark. I expect you to abide by it like everyone else. I'll see you, Vern. Evening, John. I guess you forgot about the curfew.
Well, I was worried about you. What did you want me to do? Well, I didn't want you to call the sheriff. I'm very capable of taking care of myself, Sandy. And I'm sorry. I didn't realize my caring about you would be so upsetting. All right, I'm tired. I'm going home to get some sleep. I'll see you later. John? Hmm? You're not going to like this. Well, don't tell me. I think it's Byron. What's Byron? I think he's behind the killings. Well, why was I attacked right after we saw him in the restaurant? Well, you told me he was badly bitten by a wolf in Canada, and you also said... Oh, you're not said... going to start that werewolf business, are you? Well, I don't know what I'm starting on or what I believe, but he said that the wolf had... Hi. Am I interrupting anything? No, no, no. Now, I'm going to get some sleep. Do not go back to your house. Goodbye, right, Sammy. What's that all about? Uh, nothing. Didn't sound like nothing. What was that about a werewolf? She said that she tells you everything. She's decided that Byron's a werewolf. How about that? You're not laughing, Vernon. John, I wonder if you'd ride out to Byron's with me this afternoon. What for? Just to talk to him. I'll pick you up about 2 o'clock, all right? Whatever you say, Vern. Interesting. That's all you've got to say? What would you like for me to say? Well, how about you be glad to help us? It's not my concern. I don't get you. Four of your neighbors have been violently killed in the last ten days, and that is not your concern? Ah, oh, you're angry. That's good. I like to see a man in anger. It's a living emotion. Living emotion? What the hell are you talking about? Are you going to help us or not? Not. Thank you very much, Mr. Byron. That's all I wanted to know. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Doesn't any of this bother you at all? No, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying? Yes, enjoying it. I'm enjoying seeing people feel anger, fear, agitation. It means they're alive, John. Maybe for the first time in years. John. Just in case you're thinking about going after that animal yourself. A good hunter is never sure of anything except that his prey will do the unexpected. Some friend you've got there. No, he's not my friend. I wonder if he ever was. Who's the guy that works for him? Grant? What about him? The whole time we were there, he was watching us. Yeah, he's a little odd. But then so is his master. You know how Byron hired him? Uh -huh. They met in a bar one night. They got to drinking. Byron pulled one of his old stunts. He was going to arm wrestle him for the drinks. Always had a big thing about arm wrestling. Well, it took him ten minutes to put Grant down. And that impressed him so much, he hired him. Well, your weird friend doesn't know it. But I'm going to keep a close eye on him from now on.
Michael, what's the matter? Charlie, are you crazy sneaking up on me? <laughs> Getting a little edgy in your old age, huh? That is not funny. Anything happening? No, nothing. Look, keep an eye on the place. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Any further questions? Yes. 
Why don't you answer the first question? Somebody's got to know what's killing these people. Gentlemen, you've been told what it is. An animal of some sort. An animal outmaneuvering your entire department? How big a fool do you think we are out here? I just received a wire from Sacramento. The governor has declared this area in a state of emergency. The National Guard will be brought in. Armed with silver bullets? <laughs> Some of you may think this situation is very funny, but we don't. There have been five brutal slayings, including one of our own men. We don't find that very humorous. Now the National Guard will commence operations within three days. End of report. You heard the howling of a wolf last night, Mr. Weatherby? Yes. You think the killer is a wolf? No. A werewolf? Look, you got everything you needed inside. Look, I just want to ask you... I told you to get out of here. This town is really stirred up. It sure is. Well, I'm glad the governor called the guard in. Yeah? What's the matter? Don't you think there'd be any help? No, I don't. That's good news, John. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll see you later. Goodbye, Sandy. Goodbye, Vern. Quite a turnout. What are you doing here, Byron? Since 7 o'clock this morning, I've been answering your Sheriff Bell's questions. I'm going to tell you something. Before this is over, you're going to be answering a lot more. You know where I live, Sheriff. But next time, I suggest you bring a warrant. Hey John, I've got to go back inside. Will you wait for me? Sure. Look at those faces. Oh, yeah, don't tell me they're alive. Alive with fear. Alert to the possibility of death hanging over their heads. And you think that's just marvelous? It is marvelous, John. When is a man more alive than on his way to the gallows? What cigarette tastes as good as that last one while the firing squad is waiting? You know, in a way, these killings may be of benefit to everybody. Well, good to see you again, John. Sandy. It's him? I know it's him. So I almost wish it were. Can't you admit that it's even possible? What, that Byron's a werewolf? I never said that. I said... Well, what did you say? What do you want from me? A little common sense. If Byron isn't involved, and he's such a good friend, why does he keep refusing to help you? I guess there's only one way that I'm going to satisfy you. Oh, well, Mr. Weatherby, how are you, sir? Come in. Twice in one day? What do I owe the pleasure? It's time for you to help me find the animal, Byron. You can't tell me it's not your concern anymore. Excuse me, sir. John, can't you understand why I haven't involved myself? No, I can't. Well, I guess I'll have to tell you. Because I hate to see you so much less a man than you were.
because I was hoping that letting you work on the problem unaided might help you to regain some portion of your once consummate skill as a hunter. That is why you haven't helped? You sound surprised. Byron, people are being killed. The deputy sheriff has been killed. Now, what the devil difference does it make if I regain my hunting skills or not? The whole area is in panic, and you're talking to me about hunting skills? You're too involved, John. That's why you can't locate the animal. All you're concerned about is finding it before it kills again. How foolish of me. How very unhunter-like. Now, are you going to help me find it? Last time we tried this, it took me seven minutes to put your arm down. But then, of course, that was years ago. I don't understand you. Of course you do. Can you still last seven minutes? Five minutes. John, if you can hold my arm for one minute, I'll help you. Fire and we are talking about killings, not about children's games. Basic games, John. The way in which I choose to judge my fellow man. And that's all these deaths mean to you? You matter to me. Not those drudges who got themselves killed. Well? Can't you even hold me for a minute now? Is that how far gone you are? Good, John. Tell me when you're ready. Now. Twenty seconds. Forty five seconds. seconds, John. Forget about that animal. Even if you found it, it would only kill you. He said no. Damn well he did. And? And I am going to have a drink and a nap. And? But not consider for a moment he might be guilty. John, 
Please, don't go. Changed my mind. Thought it might be fun, like old times. Okay. John, don't go with him. What's the matter? Don't you want me to help him? Just a minute. Come here. What is the matter with you? You've done nothing but ask me why he wasn't willing to help, and now that he is willing, you want me to turn him down. What is that? John, I'm afraid of him. Why did he change his mind? I need his help, Sandy. No, John, it's more than that now. Well, what are you talking about? You'd go with him even if you knew he was the killer. Now, don't you worry. I want to take real good care of him. John, if you found out it really was a werewolf you were after. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Wouldn't it explain the tracks? Think about it. A wolf-like creature running on all fours undergoes a transformation. Now it's a heavier, two-legged creature, but it hasn't changed completely yet, so the tracks are still unfamiliar. Finally, the two-legged creature turns into a man who, in order to protect himself, obliterates his footprints. Doesn't that make sense? Makes a wonderful story, Byron. Yes, doesn't it? Let's get at it. Shall we separate now? Mm -hmm. I'll make a sweep through those hills. That side of the creek meets further down where it runs into the road. All right, I'll take this side. Good luck, John. Don't forget what I told you. A good hunter's never sure of anything, except that... Yeah, I know, except that his prey will do the unexpected.
Grant, listen to me. I know. I found Byron's body. Did you really? Put the rifle down, John. On the table. Now. Back up, John. Against the wall. Thank you, John. That was Grant's body in your clothes, wasn't it? He threatened to tell the police about me. And it did provide for a stunning moment, didn't it? Aren't you at all curious as to how I did it? All right. How did you do it? To the basement stairs, John. Racing the tracks was nothing, of course. The change in scent, obvious. There were two of us. The switch is on your left, John. And uh, watch the stairs, they're rather steep. The two-legged tracks I made myself. A simple matter of borrowing claws and foot pads from some of my trophies, and fastening them to the bottoms of a pair of my boots. Most perplexing to you, naturally. You were correct about the four-legged tracks, though. What you didn't realize was that I'd burned and scarred them to make it more difficult. In that. rustic clod some reason for existence. To fill their empty minds with so much terror that even they come alive. And to bring my old friend back to me again. Maybe he's not the man he used to be, but we can work on that. Revitalize old muscles, bring back old instincts. Byron, don't you realize you have murdered six human beings? I could have made it seven, John. But I didn't want to kill your lady friend. I just wanted to arouse you. And now? You remember where you found that deputy's body? Clearing nearby? Yes. <laughs> Won't do you any good, John. It's empty. There's a shell box lying on top of a log in that clearing with two shells in it. I put them there earlier this evening. One for him. And one for me. We're going to give you a five-minute head start. Must you'd rather go to the Mato Grosso with me. It'd be just like old times, John, you and I. Think about it. The choice is yours. Byron, there aren't any choices. We're not going to the Mato Grosso. And I certainly am not going to give you the satisfaction of pretending you're still a hunter. I think 
kind of playing games, John? Pick up the rifle. Why didn't you use that before? I doubt that even you would have stalked me if you'd seen a pistol in my hand. You wanted me to stalk you. Well, let's just say I didn't want you to leave. But I am leaving, John. You won your life. Cheaply and dishonorably, of course. But then every man places his own personal value on his existence. Stay where you are, Byron. You're breaking the rules, John. Have I? Or did you just forget the most important rule of all? Remember, the prey will always do the unexpected. Byron. You civilized, John. Humane. You wouldn't shoot a man in the back. I can't let you go, Byron. Byron.
And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.